I'd like to introduce you to Lil Red. I got this guy at Walmart for $880. Now, mini bikes are really slow. 20 miles per hour. Ooh, but here's the thing. I know what it's like to be called slow, and I don't like it. I'm gonna get Little Red to go 100 miles an hour, and it's gonna be super easy. <laughs> Better not blow my foot off, dude. This will never do it. <laughs> Three, two, one. Now there are a bunch of modifications we're gonna have to make to Little Red, including the chassis, the wheels, the brakes, the gearing. But before we do anything, we need to make some more horsepower. So we're gonna start with the engine. Dude, that oil stinks. That's some stinky oil. So for Little Red to go 100 miles an hour, I need to figure out how much horsepower this engine needs to make so we can reach that speed. So I did a whole bunch of calculations and I figured out that I should probably contact someone who's better suited to tell me a good answer. <laughs> So I hit up my buddy Taylor from Go Power Sports and he says that this thing needs to make 28 horsepower to the wheels to go 100 miles an hour. Now you might be wondering how much horsepower bone stock does Little Red make? Well, we went to the dyno to find out. And while we were there, we found out that Little Red makes 3.47 horsepower. Bruh. Not bad. We got some work to do though. We also made an enemy, Mickey. <laughs> Mickey with 30 years of experience and long hair and big buff muscles thinks that this thing will never go 100 miles an hour. That motor is, a, is smaller than a lawnmower. You guys aren't gonna get anywhere with that. <laughs> no faith. When you pull, uh, it's not faith, it's called uh, uh, smart. I'm gonna do to Mickey what I do to all of my doubters. I'm gonna prove Mickey wrong. I'm freaking motivated now. Hey, guess what I heard about Valvoline, the official oil sponsor of Dona. Okay, so my cousin Jimmy was telling me about Valvoline's extended protection, full synthetic, high mileage motor oil. Now I know what you're thinking. The name's a little long, but super fragile, catalytic, expialidocious. This stuff is liquid gold. I mean, if this thing had arms, they'd be massive. It's 10 times stronger against nasty oil breakdown. you. Now let's see how it stacks up against the industry standard for wear protection. Boom! Valvoline's extended protection high mileage gives you 50% more, baby. This stuff was formulated for engines over 75,000 miles by absolute geniuses. And I'm not using that word loosely. Jimmy told me these Valvoline people came down from the heavens with their little wings and literally introduced motor oil to America. Thank you. Now, I'm not 100% sure about the first part, but I do know that Valvoline is the original motor oil. So if I was you, I'd listen to Cousin Jimmy and protect your car with Valvoline today. To learn more, just click the link below. Our strategy here is to completely disassemble this engine and replace every single part that matters with parts that are stronger and lighter. That way we can rev the engine faster, make more horsepower, and when we're making that horsepower, those parts don't blow up. Here is every single individual component that is going into our engine. This is the only thing we're saving, our cast aluminum case and cylinder. All of this has got to go into here. First, I'm assembling my rings onto my piston. And this piston is slightly different from our stock piston. One, this is a flat top piston. So see how we kind of have some concaveness on the top of this piston? This is flat, completely flat. That's gonna up our compression ratio so we can make more compression, make more horsepower. Now let's assemble the ring set. You seem confused, Jerry. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out which ring goes where. See if there's instructions. I really botched this sucker up. I threw away the instructions. I'm already dumpster diving. <laughs> Whatever. Fuck it. We got our oiling ring on the bottom. It's gonna get us our juice. There we go. Okay, now our stock connecting rods made out of a cast aluminum. Pretty cheap, simple design here. We don't even have rod bearings here. Our new build aluminum connecting rod actually has bearings. It's lighter, it's stronger, and fingers crossed, it's gonna help us make some more power. Now I can put my crank in. Okay, we got our crankshaft and our piston installed. Beautiful. We're like halfway there. Next thing we're gonna do, put in camshaft. 
this stock camshaft right here, piece of junk. Now the gear itself is made out of some sort of plastic, but the profile is for economy. It's not meant for making a lot of horsepower. When I say profile, I mean these lobes right here. The shape and profile of those lobes dictate how much air gets pulled in, when that air gets pulled in, and essentially helps us make more power. Our profile is meant for getting some nice upgraded ponies. The next piece we're gonna install is this nice billet side cover. So the main differences between our upgraded and our stock side cover, this is made out of trick billet aluminum that they machine to get this shape. It rides on two bearings instead of one. It also has some additional breather holes built into the side case for our ventilation. And then lastly, we have a nice treated surface that our camshaft rides on. Let's throw this sucker on here and start looking cool. I'm hoping I get it on the first try. Fingers crossed. Let's see. That's not going on, you God, these dowels. Sometimes you just gotta hit stuff a little harder. There we go. Great, beautiful. So now what I'm gonna do is torque these bolts down on our side cover and then install our billet flywheel. So this thing, again, like our side cover, is machined out of a single block of aluminum. Now this thing is our old crappy cast aluminum flywheel. Super heavy, it's made out of cast aluminum, which means it's porous. And when the engine starts spinning really fast, you don't want this because this thing can fly apart into a million pieces. Flywheel on, baby. Cooking with gas. Looks good, it's gonna work good too. Next thing I gotta do, install our head studs, then put the head on. This is our stock head right here. Little dinky valve springs, look at that. I can push that with my fingers. Same size intake and exhaust valve. Come over here to our fully built head. This is big, fat, chunky intake valve means that we can suck up more air and we can make more horsepower. Let's go. The component that's gonna create the biggest change in horsepower is this right here, our carburetor. Now this is our stock carburetor. Look at that, look at that little baby hole. Now look at this man-sized hole. <laughs> We're gonna be pulling in so much air through that hole, feeding this entire combustion chamber. We'll be making a whole bunch of horsepower. So let's get this thing on and then see if we can fire this sucker up. What an idiot. Fire it up right here, right? Yeah. You seem concerned, Jeremy. Yeah, it's making some noises I'm not real familiar with. <laughs> clack, 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 clack. Oh, clack, clack, clack. So I'm just hoping that I didn't forget something because that would be a real bozo move. I hope the thing starts. <laughs> That's it's what I It's gonna blow up on my foot like a landmine. I hope it goes boom, boom. I pull this, give it a little gas, and she rips. You better not blow my foot off. God. Really step on it, Jimmy. Oh, no, I know. Smell that I'm sweet, sweet victory. Can you believe that we did all that in one day? Two thumbs up. Mickey, it runs, I started it. Does it take throttle? Yeah, 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 it, it takes, takes yeah, it takes throttle, yeah. The motor doesn't have a vacuum <laughs> to suck the fuel out of the carburetor. I get it, I get it, man. I don't, listen. You guys don't get it. No, I do, I do get it. We're gonna make this thing go 100 miles an okay. hour, I promise. It ain't gonna go 100 miles an hour, but okay. <laughs> Okay, dude, Mickey busting my absolute chops. Okay, before we put this engine back into our little mini motorcycle here, the clutch that came on our stock engine had a much smaller diameter shaft uh, from the crank. So we have an upgraded clutch assembly. It's basically now a Ducati. So we're gonna put that on and then we're gonna get a new chain, which I have right here. Okay, didn't mean to dump that out. We're gonna go that directly to a new rear sprocket on the rear so we can get this thing dynoed, see how much horsepower it makes. Look at that. 
Here, is that safe? Yeah, kind of. Next, what I'm gonna do is pop this wheel off. <laughs> I feel like we all saw that coming. Yeah, everyone saw it coming. And then put our new sprocket on, then put our chain on, and we'll be ready to rip. Okay! Hey, oh, look at that. That's spinning terribly. <laughs> we should show up like this to Mickey's place. <laughs> Mickey would lose his mind. Okay, the moment of truth. The engine started before, but now it's in the bike. Oh, <laughs> It runs, baby. It makes a power, baby. You sure about that? You sure about that? You sure about that? All right, so our dyno session did not go as planned. We made less horsepower than we did when this engine was stock. I got to go and I got to spin it and it right. just won't pull the gear. It have even, on the, even on the top end, it's not going to do matter. anything. Gotcha. This will never do it. <laughs> there are a couple reasons why that is. But the main reason is we weren't getting enough fuel. You don't have enough fuel, you can't make more power. I pulled our spark plug and you can see it's white. White is a good indicator that we're running lean, meaning we have more air than fuel. That's not great, it's not good for your engine, it's also not good for making power. Here we have a spark plug that's black, there's soot on it. That means we're right in the range where we're getting enough fuel to make power. So there are two things we're gonna do so that we can get more fuel. The first is we're gonna take our intake manifold and we're gonna cut it down a little bit to get that carburetor to butt up to the intake side of the engine as close as possible. We just gotta go 100 miles once, right? Like everything else here, we just do it once and it's to the donut graveyard. The second thing we're gonna do is install a mechanical fuel pump driven off pressure from the engine. That way we make sure that the bowl of our carburetor is filled with fuel the entire time because right now it's just gravity fed and there's a chance that we're not getting enough fuel being delivered through our jets to make power. Forget gravity. God's not welcome here. <laughs> And then the third thing, and the most important thing, is making sure that we have this carburetor jetted properly so that our air-fuel ratio is spot on. Be careful. It's, it's pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't know if I'd have ever ridden a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. This thing is dead. Good luck. <laughs> dino day. New dino spot. John's going to be helping us out. Mickey didn't have availability to fit us in. Not surprised. Mini bike is set up for success. We made three and a half horsepower last time. I want to make 12 horsepower. Really, I want to make 30 horsepower, if I'm being honest. But I'll do anything above 10 would be good. You know how to do this, right? No, I don't. You're going to learn. You're going to hit the green button. OK. To start. OK. Jesus. Can I be completely honest with you? I didn't know I was going to be dynoing it, so. Nervous. Is there anything I should be aware of? Like, have you ever had a bike blow up on you? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Spill hot coolant on me and melt my skin off my leg. Is that why I'm doing it? <laughs> right fan on, check. Air fuel ratio, check. Here we go. Yeah, it came out of this feeder. You have towels? Let me go clean this shit up. bike was cutting out real high end. We only got to, it says max, seven grand. Seven thousand RPM, bike cuts off. If 
Almost like it's an ignition cut. I don't know if there's like a safety thing associated with this. Made max 16.4 horsepower. Do you think that 16, 17 will get you over the line where you need to be? No. This thing will probably rev to about 9,000 RPM, so we need to we need to do something. So the gap between our coil and our flywheel is a little too tight. That can cause some ignition problems and potentially the reason why this thing is dying. If I don't get this finished, my wife's gonna leave me. That, Mickey. Oh, this is not gonna do anything. You think it's a piece of junk. We were able to get Little Red to 71 miles an hour. Sure, we didn't quite hit our initial goal, but that's okay because horsepower isn't the only thing that's gonna get this little hog up to 100 miles an hour. This is just the first of a three-part series that's gonna be coming out all this week. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss it when Jerry actually tries to drive this thing 100 miles per hour. Best of luck, Jerry. Ugh.